So, Dan, let's start with you. Sure. Where did you serve? Yeah. How many years? So I went to I went to West Point. I, I entered in '92 and I graduated '96. And uh, yeah, then I was an engineer. So I was in Leonard Wood for my officer basic, and then I went to uh, the first cav in, at Fort Hood. Um, and then I had an unusual kind of an unusual career move where I went to the Armor Advanced Course at Fort Knox in Kentucky. And then I went to Fort Stewart, and pretty much as soon as I got to Fort Stewart in Georgia, uh, we all went to Bosnia for about like nine months where we were doing humanitarian, humanitarian demining. Um, and then I, then soon after I got back from Bosnia, then I got out. Casey? I uh, entered the military with no plan. Uh, it was 2012. Uh, college just really wasn't working out for me. And uh, I talked to a recruiter one day, and the recruiter said, apply for all these jobs, took the ASVAB. He said, well, if you come back in four months at the job I picked, he said, I'll, I'll have that ready for you. Well, I said, I said, if I wait four months, I don't know if I'm coming back. So I actually joined the Navy undesignated. He uh, signed me up and I left in two weeks to Great Lakes, uh, Illinois. Um, I ended up striking a rate uh, rescue swimmer on the USS Donald Cook. And that I did a one deployment with USS Donald Cook and then it transferred me over to the USS Iwo Jima where I served another deployment four years and I, and I got out. Right. Both of you, when you got out of the military, what was your plan? Did you have any idea what you wanted to do? Oh, my gosh. Uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed the time um, and the camaraderie uh, and the people. I just didn't see myself spending a career doing it. Um, and so I, I knew that I was going to, to get out and go to school somewhere. I didn't know exactly what school I was supposed planning to go to. But, but yeah, it was... Um, I, I wanted to actually enter sports. I, I didn't, I, I was a, I, you know, I wasn't good enough to earn a dollar, you know, as a professional athlete, but I was always trying to, I, I, I was trying to figure out how do I earn money in sports somehow, some way. And so I, as I, uh, yeah, I got out and I was getting my MBA. Um, and then I got into sports marketing. It was, was the start. And so that was my, that, you know, I, that was my, my passion, uh, from day one. Um, and, and that was the, the, the kind of transition, but that was, yeah, that was the, right. that was the not so, not, not a real great plan. I must admit. Casey, we've talked before about this, but, um, you got into gaming almost right away, correct? I did. I took about a year off. I was going to use the GI Bill, similar, not similar to Daniel, but I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I wasn't sure about school. Um, and an internship in Oklahoma popped up with a company called Gaming Capital Group. And the internship was only three months, and it was just a way. I, I for me, I was just like the casino. Interesting. Wow, that's that's an interesting business. So I decided to pack up, leave to Oklahoma. I think, as Daniel could contest this, once you join the military, you're okay with leaving home, traveling, seeing where opportunity takes you. So yeah, uh, Gaming Capital Group offered me an internship, and once they say you get in gaming, you never get out. And that's what happened. So I assume there's not a lot of swimming involved. Yeah, no swimming in the casino. Right, uh, in the trade. But what skills were you able to utilize? So I'd say the biggest skill for me was that attention to detail. It starts in boot camp where you have to put your shirts in a certain order and and your uh, swim gear in a certain order, or we're checking to see if it's certified. And Daniel could attest to this yeah. too. And sign your shoes. Sign your shoes. And and for me also, you know, just the structure of waking up early. You know, they say. I think the, the best advice I ever heard was uh, you should see a sunrise every day. And, uh, it, yeah, seeing a sunrise every day, the military taught me that, and uh, I've carried that with me to today. I, I assume, Dan, being at West Point is a whole different experience. Um, unless you've gone there, yeah. got, undergone it, you have no idea what it's like. But that discipline that you learn. Yeah. Were you able to apply it when you started in gaming? Yeah, and, and I was, I was, you know, probably going to follow on from that. And the, the, the attention to detail and probably just uh, personal discipline that you build. And that's, you know, you think you might have some going into the military, you you, you know, but but they're they're really good about, you know, the military is really good about just, you know, teaching you um, what right is, what wrong is. Um, you, you know, you know how to, you know how to persevere. Um, you know, I, my brother and I have run every day that we've been here in Vegas. So every morning when we wake up, we're out the door at six thirty. We're we're getting some exercise, getting a nice sweat, regardless of how late the night was prior. 
and and that you know and so then i start my day a little earlier i usually beat the crowd and um and, and so you know that that level of 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 discipline even you know as many you know as many years as i've been out is is still certainly a part of my life and and that and that drive uh, i think is is certainly you know as an entrepreneur it's difficult right. there's not you know lots of very difficult days lots of challenges uh, lots of not necessarily knowing what the what the right path is, but I just need to persevere. Um, and and a lot of that, you know, a lot of that comes from you know good old, you know, military experience. Right. Um, problem solving is that also a skill you learned? Oh yeah, absolutely. Problem solving, and you know, really to touch another one, I, I would say as big as we call it military bearing. But you know, as an entrepreneur, sometimes I've been in very stressful situations. And you don't know how to react or how to think. But with that military experience and having that military bearing, I feel like I always kind of hone myself back in and I'm able to calm down and assess the situation. Well, tell me about one. Tell me something concrete. Uh, let me give an example. Um, I show up and I'm doing my first install with Dynamic Gaming. I've hired two technicians and I'm dealing with Thunderbird Casino in Oklahoma. I don't have somebody show up that day, so I got to drive the install truck. Well, the casino doesn't necessarily have a sign that shows clearance. They told me to park underneath the awning. Well, there's two awnings to park underneath. I park underneath the wrong one on my first install of my first client. I completely take off half the awning. Uh, clients are coming outside. They're looking at the casino. Everybody's freaking out. And at that point, I'm like, did I just ruin my business? But I had my military bearing. I calmed down and I know that it's important to be over apologetic. So I said, guys, if you want to switch me out and you want to pick somebody out, I just... I just messed this up. It was over apologetic. And then, uh, and then we understood the situation, talked to them. I was calm and said, you know, well, obviously we didn't have the clearance side and it all worked out and they ended up being my client. But I think that military bearing got me to not freak out, especially rescue summer school. You know, I went through a lot of stressful situations there where if I didn't stay calm, I wouldn't have gotten my checks and balances. And anything concrete? Yeah. yeah I, I would say that I would, it's in the same light. As an entrepreneur, you you have all of these situations come at you, um, and it's really about your own perspective and changing your own perspective on these things that happen. I and some people just can't handle that as well. Um, you know, the world is going to end today or tomorrow or in the next five minutes. And, and when you, you know, just being in the military, you have so many crazy things that have happened to you that you, that you start to manage that internally. It's not really about, you know, all the things that are going to happen to you, that those are going to happen to you regardless. Right. What, what I, what I probably learned best about, you know, uh, you know, freshman year at, at West Point or, or going through, you know, basic courses, um, you know, where, where you are, um, you are put, you are purposefully put in stressful situations so that you could handle them later on in life. Um, you know, that, that's, it's the perspective that you have. Um, and that can change. Everything else can't. When you were in Bosnia, did you yeah. ever undergo anything really stressful? Um, I, I, I see we were doing humanitarian demining. Yeah. And we were doing, right. and we were, it was, it was during peacekeeping. So, um, y you know, I didn't necessarily think it was stressful. I, you know, some of, some of the guys on the team might have. You know, we were walking in minefields and, and those types of things, and it's <laughs> but, but not stressful. At all. It's, but but yeah, I mean, they had been to mine, but 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 you're hoping that the, 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 you know, somebody got through. But but again, you, you know, it's it's um, you know, for somebody that that maybe you know is coming from a civilian perspective and and going there, that that could be. But but you've been trained, you know, for years and years and years to kind of manage those situations. Well, I imagine rescuing people at sea <laughs> is pretty stressful. You know, uh, Coast Guard does get the majority of those calls. I, they call rescue swimmers in the Navy glorified babysitters because we're just checking on the folks that fall overboard. I think the most stressful part about that was school. Uh, yeah, it was just the, the school itself, and uh, they have these uh, the technology now where the helicopter actually goes and crashes itself in the pool and— so they make it as real life as it can get. Yeah. Um, both of you guys are really personable and easy to talk to. And I can't imagine, I have to imagine, that that's another skill you learn in the military. Because you have to be direct with people. You have to be willing to engage them. 
Uh, can you talk about that and how that has transferred over to what you're doing in gaming? Uh, yeah, without a doubt, um, you are, every military unit I was ever in was incredibly diverse. And, and from, um, you, you know, from uh, race and, and gender and, and parts of the country and internationally, when I was in Bosnia, we had a lot of different people that we were dealing with. And I think that, you, you know, you, 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 have, you have to work well with others. You know that it's a team game. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much no matter what you're doing, it's always a team game. And, you know, sometimes the team members are different. So how do you, how do you relate? Um, you know, I need to be firm here, but, you know, I don't need to be firm here. I, I, you know, I need to be a little less caring here because we need to be, you know, direct and, and maybe a little more caring in certain situations. And, and you get put in all of those situations when you're in the army uh, or when I was in the army uh, enough times where, yeah, once you come out, you, you, you do, you, you start to assess the situation a little, you know, maybe a little, little, little differently. It's a great point. I, uh, growing up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, primarily Hispanic. Uh, that's all I knew growing up. I joined the military, like you mentioned early. Um, and to Daniel's point, I mean, I, next thing you know, I had a buddy that was in boot camp from Boston, and then I had a buddy from down south Alabama. And I was like, wow, okay. Then he started like, well, I like this on my chicken, or I like this on my... And I was, it gave me really a diverse group that I learned a lot of different things. And when you communicate, obviously, in gaming, some of your customers might be from Alabama or might be from Florida. So that definitely gave me an upper hand by dealing with those people. And as coming together one team, to Daniel's point, you start to learn that some people you got to be more aggressive and how you talk to them and some people a little more passive, depending on what part of the country they grew up. Is it fair to say either consciously or subconsciously you draw from your military experience every day? Absolutely. Every single every day. Every, every single day. There's no doubt in my mind. And 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 probably at my stage, um, it, it's probably a little more sub conscious. But but it's like this muscle. It's like, you know, uh, let's go back to personal discipline. It's this muscle that I have been exercising, you know, since I was in the military a little bit every day and a little bit every day. And so it's not, I don't notice that I do this, you know, necessarily. Muscle but, memory. But yeah, it's, it's a little bit like that. And so, yes, without a doubt, um, there, there are, I'm sure there are a lot of things that somebody else would look at me and they're like, oh yeah, you're more militant, you know? Right. And I don't necessarily I don't know, know that. I, right, yeah, but I, I don't know that I, you know, I don't, I don't notice that myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but somebody else might look at that and say, yes, without a doubt. I, I couldn't agree more. That's basically right on par. I uh, just like Daniel said, when he wakes up early in the morning with his brother to run, it's subconscious muscle, and and those discipline habits stick with you. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? You know, uh, this has been a great G2E. I really appreciate you spotlighting veterans. Um, I, I hope uh, veterans could have more employment in gaming. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of job fairs for the Navy, a lot of job fairs for the Army when you get out. And I hardly see gaming companies show up to those. I see oil and gas companies. Um, I'm sure you could, engineering companies. You know, I, I, I never see gaming companies. And in, and some of the best employees have a military background. So if, if I could encourage the gaming industry at anything, I would encourage them having job fairs with the military a lot more. Yeah, I, I would say that um, being in the gaming industry, that, that military, that, uh, the military community and, and veterans themselves probably over-index on, on at-risk, uh, you know, gambling addiction. Um, and so we had a run on, on Monday morning where we invited a bunch of people, we donated money and, you know, for Operation Responsible Gambling, which is part of the National Council for Problem Gambling. So, you know, I, I think that it's, uh, it's, it's great for us to highlight, um, you know, veterans in gaming. And I think that there's probably, you know, a service that we owe to, to those that are, are still serving or are in those military communities to, to create as much awareness around some of those addiction issues as well. Dan, you're in a position to hire people for your company. I am. Um, when you see an applicant has served in the Navy, Coast Guard, Marines, Army, yeah. Air Force, does that give them a little bit extra leg up? It, it does. But also like just working with other people in the gaming industry, when I find out that other people are, are veterans, um, yeah, there's there's a camaraderie that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, even though I, you know, I, I might have some rivalry with the Navy or the Air Force, 
at you know th- that that um, you know is superseded by the, the camaraderie that we have as as people that have served. I, I know that the experiences that they have had, at least in general, I, I know they've been through some rigor uh, in their life. Um, you know, and because you know, basic training is is designed to 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 force you to to to, to go through some challenges. And and that that um, you know, I, without a doubt, it's something that 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 resonates with me. I think that's it. This was awesome. Yeah, thank you.